Hello and welcome. We are doing one of Dekawa's Fundy. And let's get into the headcanons. Also, uh, if you want any other head, uh, if you have any other headcanons about what if Deku was Fundy, uh, just put them in the comments and put any other ideas because, also, because you know I love your opinions and honestly, guys, uh, those who have uh, commented like uh, other what if ideas like that what if Deku was cheated on and was George not found dream and other things uh i can't remember the last one someone actually commented that uh i don't mind it but like it's too unoriginal for me i'm not saying it's uh unoriginal it's just i feel like cheated on is uh, what if Deku was cheated on is used a bit too much and is kind of uh you don't have much to play with with by oh I got cheated on and I should make them suffer more like more like betrayed is more but in most what ifs he he ends up in jail or something or something close but usually jail for like the like he could literally if if they betrayed him he's basically honestly I'm not surprised, uh, I'm not, I'm so surprised he didn't turn into a villain, but this is turning into rant, so let's get into the headcanons. UA is a college. Maybe. I don't know. I might put it as a, um, high school, probably a college, though, so. Depending on how this, uh, how much, uh, how much, uh, like, things I am gonna do for, like, him meeting other people, before UA or something. So, this is mostly from the Origin SMP and fan art. I thought it looked nice. So, uh, look. So, this is based off those two things and also, uh, other things as well. Izuku is short for his age and is smaller than other kids, but is, uh, as a 15 year old, he is 4'10 and is below Asui, who is. 411 <laughs> Could you stop doing that? Thanks. Okay, so Asui who is 411 and she's like the second uh shortest and Mineta's the first shortest cuz he's small as hell. Uh He's like but now he is second shortest. Okay. So, and since their quirks are based on animals, the, they're close since their quirks are based on animals. They're childhood friends, but not going to be lovers. Izuku has long fox ears and a fluffy tail, and he's able to make his hands into paws, and the fur that his, yeah, goes to... His uh, elbow, and he can also turn his legs into hind legs, into hind legs that go to his like knee or and a bit more, like the fur. But he's more comfortable with his his hind legs, but not really his paws. He really only does that if he just wants to not do anything because it's harder for him to do things with paws. Izuku can turn himself into a humanoid, like a well, uh, fox, like in the middle, with hind legs and hind f- and paw hands. So, And he walks on two feet. And... He can turn into a normal fox, and he also can turn into human, but doesn't like it, and rather be half or full fox. Izuku has built dens in the woods for for like a second, third, fourth, fifth home, and has made into a house underground, but in a cottage core kind of style. Izuku can camouflage himself slash make himself invisible. He can uh, jump super high, 
jump uh, to long distances and able to take and is not able to take fall damage from the highest point you can probably manage. Uh, when he jumps in the air, he does double damage, like in the origin. Izuku, as a fox, is very energetic and needs attention constantly and laughs like a fox would. Izuku, when he's mad, he, uh, when he's mad, will turn his head into a fox and bite the person or thing that upset him, like a plastic bag getting caught in his ears or hair or something close and trying to bite it. And then the person who inter- irritated them, him, uh, just bites them on the arm and he couldn't care less if, if they, uh, yell or some or try to hurt him but it's usually because uh they said something about uh someone he cares about or himself asui and izuku are childhood friends and would hang out and play in the forest with each other and other animals and also in the city okay so in my well my whole uh my what ifs i'm probably gonna do only gay ships and maybe a few straight ships because uh there's not really any like youtubers who really do any like gay ships so we're gonna like why not just do the exact opposite and do mainly gay ships i know not all of them have anything against lgbtq or anything gay It's just they rather, um, they're probably not comfortable with it. But I am. So just give me all the ships. I honestly don't mind. And if you don't like the thought of two males being together in a relationship, it's fine. You can probably just be in the first parts of the what if. Because they're not really going to do anything with uh, any relationship. And what if Deku was technically, uh, yeah, there's no show for that one. So if you don't feel comfortable with uh, two males being together, that's fine. You can still watch it. Just you can just skip it, or you know, it's up to you. I don't have any dictatorship over what you like and what you do or what you can. That's your choice, not mine. Bako has called Izuku a furry, and has bit scratched and scratched him multiple times he has scars everywhere on his arms his legs his back his chest honestly it's because of him irritating and antagonizing izuku izuku will turn into a fox in his sleep and only realize it when he uh he looks himself in the mirror or tries to put on clothes izuku has multiple dens where he just goes in them when he's bored because he doesn't want to or he doesn't want to sleep in a bed in rather his den. Izuku can pull up a screen in the air and he can hack and do almost anything technology based. Izuku can ma- manipulate the code of the world and when he does, he usually does it in a forest so it doesn't get noticed too much and he does and his eyes go into a deeper color and glows. Izuku loves berries, like the Minecraft berries, and plants them everywhere close to his den and his uh, and anywhere close to his home. Izuku has webbed hands and feet so he can swim more easily because of his mother was a fish or mermaid, mermaid woman or fish pirate woman or whatever the fandom likes to imagine her as. Inko is not his mother, it's Sally. Also, I'll give you some examples of uh, Sally. We have this one and this one. Either one, she looks very nice. She looks awesome. Look at this. We're gonna we're gonna stay there for a bit. But uh, okay. Wilbur is Izuku's father, but was named by his mother. His full name is Izuku Fundy Su Salmon. But he rarely uses Izuku or Salmon because he finds it a bit embarrassing. Embar- embarrassing. So he uses Fundy as his first name and neglects his fir- 
his actual first name because it's just to respect the country he they were in at the time, which was Japan. But he only uses it to introduce himself, but he would say, just call him Fundy. Wilbur also doesn't call Izuku, Izuku because Fundy is the is the name Sally gave him, so he calls Izuku Fundy. Izuku was raised by Wilbur, but he remembers his mother just a bit. Um, but o- not only just Wilbur, you'll see in a bit. Uh, just in a bit. Uh, and he only rem- remembers her just a bit, and has a picture of her on, on him at all times. And and he it's of when he was a baby and his mother holding him. Uh, Wilbur gave Izuku Sally, uh, Sally's wedding ring and wedding ring, which was a ring with an emerald in it, which was Izuku and Sally's eye, eye, eye color. Wilbur gave some of Sally's belongings to Izuku and the rest of it, he put it in his room or storage. Izuku had no liking to fish or anything that would be, would contain fish for the respect of his mother. He can make explosions and fire, but they're more. He doesn't really use them, and is more docile. And you know how like uh, fire dances or something like in anime. Yeah, kind of like that, but like, and he also can manipulate it to be any shapes or even a weapon if you train hard enough. Uh, Sally died, but if she didn't die, she would have left to do work overseas, but would still visit, unlike some people. Stares at Izuku's cannon dad. <coughs> Izuku was raised by Wilbur and Eret, since Wilbur didn't know how to raise a, a baby, and Eret was the first to give him help on raising Izuku. Also, uh, here's the... Here's the, like comic of which I got inspired by to so mm. you can uh, see it so I'll try to be quiet though I hope this is enough time you know like to read it Sorry if you hear anything in the background. It's just my brother. Hmm. Instantly calm. (laughs) This is funny. Okay. Izuku knew uh, they, as an heir, weren't his real parent, but treated them as if, as if he did. So Eret made, and made Eret feel welcomed, and Eret actually helped Izuku realize himself as being transgender. Izuku is trans and tra- transitioned to male when he was in his first year of middle school, and then and realized it in the fifth slash fourth year for people in the UK. Uh, only paired for American and the UK. So, uh, sorry. Eric helped him out during his year of confusing, of confusion on why he didn't feel like he belonged as a woman. Eric helped during his transition and Wilbur was proud and didn't mind Izuku being his son instead of his daughter. Also, uh... Oh, sorry. I'll keep going. I'll keep going. Okay. Izuku uses they-them pronouns for Eret because he thinks it's more respectful. And it is. 
uh, Eret, uh, Izuku thinks of Eret as a motherly figure, since he was the one who could shush Izuku when he was a baby, and baby Izuku loved Eret, and didn't even cry when he was around, as you can tell by the other, uh, comic. When Eret was picking up Izuku, he was wearing his cottage core dress, and was picking him up because he got in trouble for biting the ever-loving stuffing out of Bakugo. <laughs> I just love... Yeah, I can just imagine imagine it in the future. Eric, can you pl- uh Hello, uh, your son uh, got in a fight and bit a student called Bakugo. And Eric just goes... Huh. <laughs> Eric would dress up Izuku in a dress... He liked to match with Izuku, and Izuku didn't mind because it was Eret. Izuku has brought multiple foxes at home and has been denied by Wilbur and keeps them, but after Eret fanboying slash fangirling slash fan fanning over them and pleading Wilbur just to say yes, he says yes, but make sure they don't reach the food. Okay, and... Let's get started with the narrator POV. We're getting to the story. (laughs) A young child of six years old with orange hair and ears and tail in the forest running is running and jumping off logs, streams, rocks, and small cliffs. They run out of the forest into a natural clearing of the forest with the house in the middle. The child is Izuku and runs to the door and opens it to see two people inside, one a man with a beanie and the other with a cottage court court dress sitting on the couch reading. I dropped my phone. The child runs up to the man who has a beanie and says, Dad! The fox child hugs the leg of the man and the man hugs the child and says, Oh, Fundy, how are you? The child says, great, I've even found these. The child then pulls out a basket of berries and then says, but they're very, but they're very far, far, so I don't think, I don't get them a lot. The man bends down and says, how about we plant these seeds in the garden and in the back so you don't have to travel that far. The child eyes lit up with joy and squeaked with joy and the child runs over to the person in the dress and says Eric will you help me and dad with planting the berries the person who was named Eric says if it's a go with Wilbur Eric looks at Wilbur with a questioning look like that says is it okay and Wilbur says of course Eric you're basically family Eric you don't need permission Eret smiles and holds the small hand of Fundy slash Izuku and led him to the garden, which was just the back of the house, but was also the forest, and a bit more back was a stream with the vegetation everywhere, and they would all go plant over there to plant the berries. The child, who was named Izuku Fundy Suit Salmon, held held the hand of the person called Eric and Fundy's father, Wilbur. They walked over a bridge above a river. They walked over on the side and planted berries. Fundy cheers when they're done and they save the ones left over for other things. And Wilbur and Eric would make make it into a pie. The child then says, then says, can Asui come over? The Wilbur says, of course, I can let, I can call her parents. I'll call her parents. The child then cheered in excitement, waiting for Asui to come over. The child then says, tomorrow, can we visit Grandpa and Uncles? Wilbur smiles and says, sure, bud. I'm sure they would lo- love to see you. The child smiles and squeaks. It was so simple for Izuku when he was 12. But when he was twelve, he was he was born a woman. But he decided to be a man. I don't think it would be very respectable of me trying to explain a uh, a transition. And I feel like it would 
offend people who uh, are trans, so I don't really want to try and explain it. Of uh, not explain it, it just like the like maybe um like the ways of transitioning. I don't think it would be very respectful of me to just explain things that would probably make someone uncomfortable. So I won't. I'll be as vague as possible. Uh, sorry if this does uh, make you uncomfortable. Izuku was confronted, uh, comforted by Eret, who told him it was right to be ma- if he wanted to be male if he wanted to. After a year, he was comfortable with himself, and felt like this was right. P- Izuku's POV. It's been two years since I transitioned to male, and I'm loving it. Over these years, my parents have moved to the big city, which wasn't too far away, but was just a bit far away from the forest that I used to play in. But that didn't mean I knew nothing about the city. I have a best friend named Asui. We were two peas in pod. We could never separate from each other. And she was the first person I told I was trans, and she supported me, which felt amazing to hear those words. I would come to the city, ah, uh, I would come to the city often just to see her and play with her. And in, in here, I would get into a lot of fights because of my temper back then. Because there's this annoying kid that would bully her because of her quirk. I think his name was Kotsky or something close to that but honestly don't care since I could beat him up again but right now I was going to a cafe in the city to meet up with Asui I finally reached it and when I see Asui I waved I sit down and she says Fundy I say hey uh, uh Sue how have you been she says it's been great since you moved to the city now I get to see you every day. Also, you look good. Also, you look good. I say, thanks, Sue. Now let's order. We wait for the waiter to come by and say, Hello, I will be your waiter for today. Also, couples eat for free. And what do you want to eat? I was a bit puzzle- puzzled on why she added that, but I just ignored it and says, uh, well, can I have a vanilla latte and four cookies? Asui then says, can I have a mocha and four brownies? The waiter then says, I'm sorry, we have to ask this to every couple when they want a discount. Are y'all dating? And if you are, can you give each other a kiss? It could be on the cheek if you're not comfortable. I look at Asui and we busted out laughing. And in between laughs and weaves, I say, we're just friends. <laughs> I would never do her. The waiter then proceeds to apologize, but it was okay. We said it was okay, and we got, we got our stuff, and after we finished, we walked around. And then I uh, went back home. We said our goodbyes, and was waiting for tomorrow to go to school. A new school. Huh. It would be nice. Okay. Part one of What If Deku Was Fundy is over. I hope uh, this was a bit longer. But, uh... Also, uh... I did uh, What If Deku Was in the SCPAU of the Dream SMP. Uh, like, twice, like, in a row, so I'm probably gonna, like, keep calm on that, uh, subject for now, so you won't see it for a while, since, like, I haven't done, uh, others yet, so, uh, I hope y'all have a good day, evening, whatever the hell, and, uh, whatever the hell it, uh, you, uh, Whatever the hell it is over there, and just have a good day, night, afternoon, morning, and goodbye.